Point number 17 says, The air was the realm where Christ's victory over Satan had been won. The air was the realm where Christ's victory over Satan had been won. Our text for this uh, point are 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 14, 16 to 17. Revelation chapter 21, verses 2 to 3. Luke chapter 17, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. And Acts chapter 28, verses 14 to 16. All right, so let us go back to our main text here. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 17. We are focusing now on the meeting of the Lord in the air. So let's read 16 and 17. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise forth. All of this we have covered already in previous video. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So for this video, we are concentrating on the meeting of the Lord in the air. Now, the rapture doctrine, like many other doctrines of the modern church, is guilty of taking Hebrew symbolism literally. One does not need to be an expert in theology to know that the Hebrew people made ample use of symbolism, especially when spiritual concepts were being expressed. There was no better way of communicating them than by using symbols. Okay, Now, much of the symbolism was rooted in their culture, which is foreign and unknown to us today. Thus, causing us to horribly misconstrue and misinterpret what would have been readily understood quite differently by the people in Paul's time. Okay? And so he, one of those examples or an example of that is the idea of what we, are, what we are going to look at now. The meeting of the Lord in the air. <laughs> All right? Let's look at 1 Thessalonians. Let's back up here to verse 14. In 1 Thessalonians 4, back up to verse 14. It says here, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep, that's the dead in Christ, will God bring with him. So Christ w was, to, was coming or would, would have been coming to the Thessalonians with the resurrected saints. Okay? Now, as we said in our previous point, point number uh, 16, that those resurrected saints and Christ formed the first population of the New Jerusalem. Okay? And the New Jerusalem, its origin was heaven, so it was a spirit reality. It was not a physical kingdom. And that New Jerusalem, that kingdom of heaven was now coming down to meet with the living saints, as verse 17 says here, in the air. <laughs> All right? In the air. So, we're talking about the new Jerusalem. We are talking about the kingdom of heaven. Good? That kingdom was descending into the earth's atmosphere or air. Now, let's think about the natural air. Okay? The natural air that we breathe. The natural air is that invisible layer that surrounds the earth. And it is restricted to the earth. I want to repeat that. The natural air that, that surrounds the earth, it's an invisible layer. And it is restricted to the earth. If you don't believe me, just try going, take, a, take a, a, a rocket ship and go outside of the atmosphere and see if you can breathe. 
you would suffocate and as a matter of fact you you your your body would not be able to withstand the, the pressure the, the 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 absence of pressure you need a pressurized suit plus you need oxygen right so that air is restricted to the earth so now the symbolism of that being applied to the spiritual um reality is that there is a spiritual realm which is referred to by the apostles as the air <laughs> okay it also is an invisible realm meaning it's a spiritual realm that is restricted to the earth in other words it is it is earth's spirit realm it is the realm of the unseen just as natural air is unseen the spirit realm is unseen just like the atmosphere is restricted to the earth this spirit air realm is also restricted to the earth okay it is earth's spirit realm so we have now in 1st Thessalonians 4:17 you have Christ and the resurrected saints as res- as um 1st Thessalonians 4:14 4, says that Christ would bring them with him okay we have these Christ and the resurrected saints of the kingdom of heaven coming down into the realm of the atmosphere of the earth the spiritual realm okay but everything is invisible that's the whole point <laughs> the realm of the air is an invisible realm just as it is naturally invisible so that is why that word is used because it is describing an invisible spiritual realm and this would be what John was seeing in Revelation chapter 21 verse 2 and 3 let's jump there quickly Revelation chapter 21 verse 2 and 3 it says there and I John saw the holy city new Jerusalem <laughs> okay the kingdom of heaven you remember it was it had been populated by the resurrected saints and with Christ as the king okay he saw that city coming down from God out of heaven this is 1 Thessalonians 4:17 okay it comes down into the air, into the atmosphere of the earth, the spiritual atmosphere, so that the living saints can meet the Lord in the air. <laughs> okay? Verse 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is where now? Is with men. So the, the kingdom of heaven came down to be with the living saints who were who had who had uh, been preserved from martyrdom who had who Christ had promised that they would not taste death till they see the kingdom come right that kingdom had arrived in their time good it is god being with men that's the kingdom <laughs> okay he will dwell with him that that representation of the kingdom coming down from heaven it all it's describing is god coming to be with man okay and god himself shall be with them notice how many times it's telling you this <laughs> okay all right so the saints who had been preserved from martyrdom at thessalonica and the other churches in the apostolic um, ministry is the time of the apostolic church these people whom christ had promised that they should not they would not taste death until after this they had seen him manifested with power in his kingdom when that kingdom of heaven entered into the realm of the earth in the invisible spirit realm of the earth or we may say manifested into the earth's spiritual atmosphere then those living saints on the earth would have access to it so what really we are seeing is that the kingdom of heaven meaning the relationship of god dwelling in and with man had now arrived and earth 
the, the, the living states on earth now had access to it. So what they had been looking forward for by faith had now become a reality. That is what it's, it's really saying. Also remember what Jesus said about this kingdom. Eh? Let's go to Luke 17, 20, because this is something that people, the, the things that Christ clearly said about this kingdom is like they, they kind of just are totally ignored because we want it so badly for this kingdom to be a physical kingdom. <laughs> okay, look at what Christ said. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God comes not with observation. Let's go down to verse 21. Neither shall they say, See here or see there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within. So it's not a literal bricks and mortar kingdom. It is a relationship between God and man. God within man, man within God. Right? That's the kingdom. So that is what had arrived or what what would soon arrive to the Thessalonians. That is what Paul was talking about. <laughs> All right? Even in the book of Revelation chapter 21, it tells you that the temple of the kingdom is not a physical temple. It is the Father and the Son. Okay? So again, when that kingdom came, it brought the presence of the Father. Okay? So understand what we what we are really seeing in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. If you go back there, what we are seeing in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, meeting the Lord in the air, okay? Meeting the Lord in the air is the new Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven being made accessible to the believers who lived on the earth. It was at that time that the promise of the kingdom within, which Jesus uh, mentioned there in Luke chapter 17, verse 21, it was at that time the kingdom within, which is really God within, became a reality for the believer. Let us look at the, a little more about the, uh, uh, at the apostolic teaching of the air. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Okay, Ephesians 2. Verse 2, it says there, speaking of the saints pre before they had been in Christ, or before they came into covenant with Christ, it says, Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, <laughs> the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Notice that according to the apostle, the dragon was referred to as the prince or the, the ruling authority. <laughs> okay? The ruling authority which had power of the air, the atmosphere. Now, it was not talking about the material atmosphere, the celestial hot atmosphere of the earth. It was talking about the spiritual atmosphere. Indicating that this power had authority to reign in the... It had spiritual authority in the earth over the people of God. Causing them to be disobedient. <laughs> Making children of disobedience. This is the same system that um, Jesus identified in Matthew 13 as the one that was sowing the children of the devil. <laughs> okay. But that's another study, right? So, we saw in our last video that these children of disobedience were fighting against Michael and his angels, <laughs> also known as Jesus and his remnant. So the dragon, the adversarial system, this adversarial system, according to Revelation 12, 9, was removed from the air. <laughs> it was cast out of heaven from its spiritual authority over God's people. It was cast out and cast down. Now, when we read in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, 
which says that the people of God, the living saints at that time, were now caught up into the air, into the same realm where the dragon had been cast out from. <laughs> so he was no longer the prince of that air anymore. The people of God are now the princes of that air. <laughs> right? So the Lord was about to translate the remnant into the air. In other words, he was bringing them into the land which he had conquered from the enemy. The land which he had just thrown out the enemy from. <laughs> he was now giving it to his people. This was the promised land. Okay? In spiritual terms. He was giving them the kingdom which he had taken from Old Covenant Israel and placing his remnant in a position of favor and authority in the air, the earth's spiritual atmosphere. Now remember in our previous study where, where, we, where, we, where we looked at the trump of God and we saw that the trump of God hearkened back to the defeat of the city of Jericho. Remember that? Or if you haven't, if you don't, maybe you didn't see, go back and watch the previous study, okay? Talking about the trump of God. But however, we saw um, when Israel entered the, the, the promised land, the first thing they did under the, under the leadership of, of Joshua and Michael, more I should say under Michael leading Israel with Joshua as its, you know, the earthly commander, but um, Michael was the heavenly commander of the people of God as the army of God, the first thing they did was to conquer the city of Jericho, which were the enemies of God. And at the seventh and last trump, the city was defeated. And it says there that the people of God ascended into that city, right? Which indicated them now being victorious over the enemies of God, okay? The position of the air relative to the earth is significant because air is above the earth, okay? The earth is below the air. And this symbolically signifies dominance and authority. Whatever is above is dominant. Whatever is above has authority, okay? So even the position, the location of air relative to earth implies dominance and authority. So to meet the Lord in the air up implies an ascending up, as I said, which, is, which gives the picture of conquering one's enemy. As when the city of Jericho was defeated as the la at the last trump, the people of God ascended up into the city. Let's look at Joshua chapter 6 verse 20. All right, Joshua chapter 6, verse 20, to see that. Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. And we, 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 we looked at the story um, in our last study, but I just want to bring this point. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. This will be the seventh trump, the last trump. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. The city was defeated. So that the people did what now? Went up. <laughs> they went up into the city. Okay? So notice Michael, the heavenly commander, gave them the victory because he told Joshua how to defeat the city. He says, as commander of the Lord's army or of the Lord's host, am I now come? So he was really the commander of the Lord's army, which were Israel, right? And when he took, gave them the battle plan, they followed the battle plan, the walls fell down, and they went up, they ascended up. Just like in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, it says they were caught up <laughs> into the air, right? So you remember the air was where the enemy was operating, the prince of the power of the air was operating there. Christ defeated him and casted him out in Revelation 12, 9. 
Good? And now, the remnant now are going to ascend into the air, which is the, the land, the spiritual land, which had previously been occupied by the enemies of God, is now occupied by the remnant or the people of God. <laughs> All right? That might be a bit too heavy for some of us, eh? But this is, this is where God's people need to be today. This is where we need to be operating. This is where we need to understand we are to be. And when we start to function in that realm as we should, a lot of the nonsense which is happening on the earth today wouldn't be happening. Because we would come into the reality of what Christ said. Whatever you bind on earth has already been bound in heaven. In other words, things have to be bound in the air first. They ha- whatever you have bound on earth would have already been bound in heaven, meaning in the air. So in other words, you have to start fighting in the air first if you want to see results on the earth. <laughs> All right? Good? The position of the air is the position of dominance and authority. And the, that is where God snatched up, raptured the living saints into the air. <laughs> okay? So the Lord, what Paul was saying in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, the Lord was about to bring his saints, his living saints, the saints on the earth. He was about to bring them into the realm of the air which before had been dominated by the spirit of disobedience, the prince of the power of the air, the enemy of God. Right? But Christ had obtained the victory there in the air. (laughs) And now when he had obtained that victory in the air, now the saints would also now occupy that land. Okay? So believers would obtain the spiritual authority to effect positive changes on the earth because all things begin first in the air, in the spirit, then they manifest in the natural. Okay? Look at Romans 16 verse 20. Romans 16 verse 20. It says there, and the God, Paul speaking to the the, the church at Rome, he said, the God of peace shall bruise Satan, the adversary, okay? He shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly, (laughs) okay? So Satan was to be removed from the air and placed under, you notice the position How is he going to be placed under? Because the saints are going to take his location where he was in the air and he was to be relegated to the earth. That means his, that symbolically means, well, whatever power and authority he had was was going to be removed. And the saints were now going to have the authority. Okay? That's, That's the symbol of being under the feet. Under the feet means you are now subject to. And the one who is standing above is the one who now has the authority. Okay? So the believers would now, were to now be in a position to move from physical battles such as David and Joshua and the other mighty men of God fought. Samson and these men fought physical battles. But the saints of God were, would soon be placed in a position where they could fight in the spirit, in the air, <laughs> effecting real change. So meeting the Lord in the air was not about escaping the earth, but it was about entering into the restored dominion which Adam had lost. It was about partaking in Christ's comprehensive victory in that realm. Okay? Now, another word we need to look at is the word that the apostle chose for the meeting of the Lord in the air. Okay? The word meet, as is used in 1 Thessalonians 4.17. Let's go back there. Where it says... 
then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds in clouds to meet this word meet is a is a special word okay it's the word apantesis okay and let us look at how paul used this word in acts chapter 28 verse 14 to 16 acts chapter 28 verse 14 to 16 okay Let's look at how Paul used this word, right? Because this word carries with it a meaning of not just meeting somebody, but it is more in the case of an official meeting where, for example, in those days, you would have a dignitary, um, a king or someone of high rank coming to visit a city, right? And when... The, the king or the whatever dignitary it was, remember they, they traveled in chariots and so on in those days, so you could basically see them coming a, a long way off, okay? So when they came in sight of the city, then they would send out a delegation from the city to go and meet that dignitary a long way off before he actually came to the city, Okay? So in other words, that, that the apanthesis meeting is where the, where the people of the city go out from the city to meet the dignitary. So the meeting does not occur in the city. It occurs out of the city, right? And then the, 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 the delegation and the dignitary come together into the city. So basically the delegation escorts the dignitary into the city. But the meeting occurs outside of the city. <laughs> okay? So, let's look at an example, in, as I said, in Acts chapter 28, verse 14, where a delegation was sent out from Rome to meet Paul at his arrival there. Okay? It says, Where we found brothers and were desired to tire with them seven days, so we went toward Rome. Okay? So they were traveling to Rome. And from there, when the brothers heard from Rome, when the brothers heard of us, they came to meet us as far as a, a P forum. So notice, these brethren left Rome to cope. They leave the city of Rome and they traveled out of Rome to meet um, Paul and his delegation. And they travel. It says they traveled as far as the Appi Forum. Now I don't know how far that is from Rome, right? But it it implies that they did not wait until Paul arrived at Rome to greet him. They instead went out of the city to meet him. Okay, so the Appantesis meeting, as I said, is one which occurs outside of the city. <laughs> okay. And then it escorts the dignitary into the city, right? So now if we apply that, the apanthesis, to 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, which, where it is actually used there, the apanthesis meeting, right? Let's come back here now. We know we would see that the, the living saints, which we are alive and remain, okay? So the living saints at, at the time of Thessalon in, in the time of the Thessalonian church, and the early apostolic church who would be alive to witness the parousia event, okay? They would be snatched up together with the resurrected saints in the body of Christ, in the cloud, right? And they would be snatched up to meet the Lord in the air. Remember the apanthesis meeting now means that they would be taken out of their city, they would leave their city, and they would meet Christ, and they would meet him where? In the air. So which means their city would have been the earthly realm. Okay? That was the, 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 the old covenant realm, the realm of the flesh. Okay? And they, ha they were now snatched out of the earthly realm and they were now meeting Christ in the spirit realm. <laughs> okay? So that means that the, that the old covenant, the flesh covenant had ended. 
all the the the, the ceremonies and the sacrifices and the and the flesh sacrifices and all of these things the these earthly symbols had ended and now the spiritual reality had come so they were trans they were snatched from the fleshly and the earthly and the physical into the spiritual as paul says the they are ministers of the new covenant not according to the letter but according to the spirit okay so the spirit had come good that spirit kingdom the kingdom of heaven right so they were snatched out of their earthly jerusalem and they were meeting Christ in the New Jerusalem. They were apanticing Christ in the New Jerusalem. Meeting Christ in the air, the realm of the spirit. Indicating that this was, again, this was not a, a visible meeting. <laughs> because it was happening in the air. The air is the, is the invisible spiritual realm. <laughs> okay. And it was at that time they would be delivered completely from the Sinai Covenant claims. The saints met the Lord in the air, the heavenly realm from which Christ had cast out Satan and his angels. This indicates that Satan and death no longer reigned over God's people. But Christ and life now reigned. And so Paul was writing to comfort the Thessalonians and the early apostolic believers that their translation into the kingdom of heaven, the new Jerusalem, would also herald Satan's comprehensive defeat at the hands of Michael the archangel, the commander of the Lord's hosts, who were now the born-again people of God.